Please play that song for ten more seconds. Shit, yo, Google that shit. Google that shit. Don't ask me, bitch. Just Google that shit. Why is this? That's what I was waiting for. Google that shit. <laughs> I guess when your company name turns up as a verb in the Oxford English Dictionary, you've done something right. So if you Google this superb product, you'll know that this is the latest version of Google Maps. And it allows you to zoom out from street view all the way out to Earth to see how the, stands, the sun stands towards Earth. So, while the Earth is spinning, I'll share some facts and stories around Google and repetitive innovation. Is there a textbook approach for repetitive innovation? I don't know. Probably not. Otherwise, more would do it, right? In the modern world, Google has a unique position, a position we earned from believing in a few things. First, we dared to think big. When we set out to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. That's our vision. And by always putting the user first and believing that the rest will follow, and luckily they did, otherwise I wouldn't be here. We started our journey of innovation. So, to state the obvious, to do repetitive innovation, you need innovation culture. Don't mix up culture with strategy. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Speaking of breakfast, we take our food pretty seriously at Google. So a fun fact. Did you know that you're never more than 50 feet or 30 meters away from a micro kitchen with all the food, snacks, beverages that you can think of in any Google office around the world? That means that when we, the small office of Oslo, knocked down the wall, it just became that me sitting in this corner, and the kitchen is over here, we need to build another kitchen because it was too far for me to walk. I had to walk you know, more than 30 meters to grab a soda, which is, you know, can't do it have to have another kitchen. So pretty cool. Anyway, but it started with search. So we did make the world's information accessible and universal and useful. And we delivered high quality and relevant answers. And we still do. It's our promise to our users. And we deliver on that promise every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every year. So search is at the core of what we do. And a lot of cool stuff did spin off that first innovation. And I could talk to you about Google Glass, Project Loon, or driverless cars. But there's so many things already said about those things, so I'll leave that up to you to check out. And I'll talk on the how. We developed a culture for innovation, and we have some principles that someone calls the Google way. So I'll talk to you about them. The principles are still, um, and by the way, Google is 15 years, so we're just a teenager in a couple of weeks. But uh, it's still at the core of what we do. And the reason why we are different, the reason we do repetitive innovation. So I'm just going to tell you what they are, and then I'm going to move on to tell, tell you a little bit about how they formed me. No, how they changed me. I have mentioned two already. Everybody must understand the vision. If it doesn't look into our vision, we don't do it. The second thing I mentioned is always put the user first. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones who decide if they like it or if they're going to use it. And that links into the next one, which is test and learn. We do innovation, not instant perfection. So we launch early, and often, because fast is better than slow. So we test it, and we learn. Larry often says, one of the most important lessons we've learned is that the best ideas could come from anywhere, which in itself is the next principle. Everybody can contribute. 
Ideas can come from anyone, and innovations can come from anywhere. Especially because the best ideas don't come from top management. Really. Crazy ideas, don't kill them. The easiest thing to say to a crazy idea, you know what it is? No. No, no because you have know, all sorts of reasons. And by saying no because, you just kill that idea. There's no energy left in that crazy idea. But if, if you would go, yes, and, you have no idea where that crazy idea could take you. That could even spin off to an even better idea. And that's something we live by in Google, and it didn't take me long before I saw the value of it as well. Data. Google is all about data. So in our company, if your idea can't be proven with data, it's just an opinion. And last, to make it all happen, always hire the best person at any given time. And I was lucky enough to be a part of Google from 2011, and I will tell you my story. How did a company set up for innovation change me? I work 8,400 kilometers away from our headquarters in California. And my job is quite distant from the engineering part of Google as well. But I could still feel the essence of being a Googler, that's what we're called, uh, a Googler right away. And the th three first months, you were a Noogler, which is a new Googler. <laughs> yes, it makes you laugh. And that's, I think, sort of, sort of also the essence. It's a fun company. We have fun. So we do funny, funny things, and we wear funny hats the three first months with a propello on top of our heads. But you know, it's a part of the culture. You come to Google, it's serious, but it's still fun. So Google is you know, different in every other way. And I've worked for a large media company, I ran a creative agency, and I've been a part of a large tech startup. And they were all different from each other. But Google, again, is just different in any, every other way. So one thing is the principles, but they don't come alive if people don't play with them, challenge them, or having fun with them. So the one thing that blew me away is the enormous focus Google have on you as a person, as an employee. They put effort into you because they care. You feel instantly that to them, you're so much more than just an employee. They bring the best out of you. And yes, the bar is high at Google in terms of expectations. But when the company you work for set goals they yet cannot reach, because they believe if you reach, if you have to reach, you reach further. When the company you work for looks upon 10% improvement as incremental, 10x is what, you, what's, what your aim should be. And because outstanding is simply not enough. These things have had a massive impact on me as a person. And I was incremental when I joined Google. I was narrowly focused. Sometimes I didn't think past my own nose. But now, now I reach. I try to think bigger. Why did this happen? And I gave this a lot of thought when I was invited to TEDx. And I think it happens because everybody believes in you. Because we hire the best, it's an eternal saying that you're better than the one who hired you. Think about your own organization. How do you treat your new hires? I found it most inspiring to really feel that everybody at Google thought the excellence I brought to the table was just a start point and not an end point. They were looking forward to what my excellence could lead to, which is futuristic. They look this way, not back way. And that is massively impactful on all employees, regardless of role and place in the hierarchy. 
And sure, just took away my next point, but I'll, I'll tell it anyway, because I was 38 years old when I joined Google, and during my interviews, a guy you know, asked me my age. And I was like, yes, I'm 38. And he goes, oh, you're pulling our average age up globally. <laughs> and I was like, whoo, <laughs> at least I'm here. Next time, I'm going to be too old. Uh, but the thing is, I find myself in a much better place now than ever before. Because everybody believes in me, I found me. And I dared being playful. My inner child came back. We became friends. I took up lost interests. And I combined them with work. And this created new energy that, and then probably an eagerness to do so much more that I even got the motivation to exercise more. So I was in the positive loop which is good. And by working out, it's allowed during working hours. Allowed to? That's what my friends say. Allowed to? Are you allowed to work out during office hours? I say, yes. If I feel the need to work out during office hours, I'll work out. And they go, oh, I, felt, you know, I feel like breaking rule if I work out during office hours. I have to hide or something. HR Google has a rule of thumb. Let's facilitate and get out of the way. Let's not create rules. Because you don't manage people at Google. You lead them. You lead them because you trust them to do their best for the company. Rules are for when you don't trust people. So think about what you present to your new hires and the people in your organization. Is it rules or is it possibilities? Where was I? Yes. Working out. Working out creates more energy. And that created even more energy. So suddenly, I dared to step out of my comfort zone, doing new things for the first time in a long time. And that became comfortable. And then I could reach further. Sounds familiar? I reached further. The company's behavior has suddenly become my behavior. And that behavior affects my personal life. Work is good, family is good, life is good. It's as simple as that. So now I'm trying to manage my energy and not my time, which actually gives me more time with my loved ones. And not... Um, and I try to, to turn off my cell phone when I come home for dinner. Because I would like to be there mentally with my wife and kids when they talk to me. And not having a smartphone between me and the kids when they're talking to me. Isn't that the worst thing about the smartphone? Stealing your focus? What are you telling your kids is most important if a social feed or an email is more important than them talking to you? So, the whole Google way changed me, as a person. And did it make me come up with innovations? Well, maybe. But in my role for Google Norway, I speak to businesses about how and the importance of online presence and how to make the most out of the web. I tried to do this by showing them some of the principles we live by as a company. And show them some creative angles on how to find a solution. But as my work progressed and I changed, I saw an opportunity. And that is to scale creativity within Google. If more people could do the things I do, maybe Google would be an even more fun place to be. And because we have the culture we have, I, the now 40-year-old in Norway, could think 10x on my idea. Because we're used to crazy ideas. And they could come from anywhere, you know, even Oslo. And because we're all in Google to contribute, we share it, we test it, we learn. I wasn't sure if I would give you an example or homework. So I ended up with giving you two challenges. So tomorrow, you could try the Google way with your business. Challenge number one. 
from tomorrow, always enter any idea, sound or crazy, with yes and. And to get those ideas flowing, challenge number two, have everybody in the company send one idea to the VP every day for a week to see what comes in. And what do you do with those ideas when you free them? You go, Thank you. So to sum up my key takeaways and that could hopefully inspire you and your business on top of the challenges. One, culture beats strategy. Two, people make culture come alive. Hire the right people and take good care of people. Three, don't have too many rules. Rules are for when you don't trust people. Four, let them be playful by not killing the crazy ideas. And five, remember that the best ideas don't come from top management, they can come from anywhere. Some people wonder why Google do the things we do, and maybe not the obvious quick wins. And I'm gonna quote Larry one more time, because he says, if it hasn't been done before, that's exactly why we should do it. So leaving you with that, this is my closing remark. Culture is what makes innovation repeat itself over and over again at Google, at Virgin, at Apple. For me, it also created repetitive magic. Me changing when getting exposed to the Google culture had me thinking bigger, me reaching for new stuff. It also made me change my mind in having a third child, which is due in February. And that's repetitive magic. <laughs> why, why am I sharing this? Because when a culture of innovation has so many aspects of change that it could come up with Google Glass, Project Loon, and driverless cars, on top of making all the employees feel this good and turning into better people, that has a tremendous value that goes beyond ROI. And that is what you get when you set up your company for repetitive innovation with the right culture. You get beyond. Thank you. <laughs>